welcome. We're doing something very different today. We're at Shopify. Shout out. They don't even sponsor us for doing a thing for them. Just kidding. Byron's here from Shopify. Thanks, Byron. <laughs> well, um, welcome back to the Things We Do podcast. I have here the Kelly Baker, who is amazing, and she knows I embarrass her on a daily basis. She's a good friend of mine beauty guru she treats everyone in the entire world with the most amazing brows can we talk about basically every kardashian yes. um how about my ultimate favorite zendaya uh what about um i mean tell me some of your favorites well i can't say who's my favorite because what if they listen no who are, who are some of your I'm girls done. um well the kardashians um Courtney, Chloe, Kim, Kylie, Jenner. Most amazing Yay. brows. All the time, which is super awesome. I need to basically move to the valley because I'm pretty much there every week now, which is crazy. Then you'll be a valley girl. Uh, well, I am actually a valley girl. You're from the I valley? Used there, yeah. I used to I live tr- right in their neighborhood. It was so weird. When I went to Chris's house, I was like, I mean, I used to live here when I was a kid. It was so odd. Yeah, I'm from Chino. Nobody's from there. No. Not the at all. Who's from Chino? I think there was an Olympian that was from there once. The Ball Brothers, BBB, they're yeah. going through something right now. Lonzo Ball, he was a Laker. Oh, yeah, I don't do sports, just brows. Okay, well, your neighborhood was a lot cooler than mine. Yeah. But I still love you, Chino Hills, 909. It's Get nice a tattoo. Out there, though. It's pretty. It is. It's I, really that's nice. That's why I used to go see you. Yes, she used to come all the way out. So we connected through IG, yep. right? So Kelly and I. I remember I had been stalking her on Instagram, and then one day um, I get a DM, and it's from Kelly, and I threw my phone, and I was like, my bangs, I threw my phone, and I was like, okay, I love this woman, what is she messaging me about, and then we connected and became friends over Instagram, and then when I met you IRL, I was like, I'm obsessed with her, and I'm never letting her go. Which is what's so fun about Instagram. Like, yeah. there's a handful of people you just connect with and become yeah. friends with. Yeah. Like, we've been friends from the get-go. Yes. But we also have a lot of things in common. We do, know? in the beauty world, for sure. And also, I feel like, work, you know how we've talked moms. about work moms also. Yeah. And then in previous episodes, we've talked about how I um, am very big on finding a mentor and making sure that you are able to bounce ideas off of someone who is way smarter than you and who uh. has more experience in this field. Kelly is that person for me. Which is crazy because I would not say I'm smarter by You're any means, but I have been around the block. Life experience. Life experience. Intelligence. She's, I mean, her heart is a million times bigger than mine. I, I don't feel know the how same she way. I'm so always much. asking her questions. What do you ask me questions about? My face. Well, that's <laughs> different. I ask her like business questions and no, she's like, how do I get my brow to do this? <laughs> no, but that's not true. I like to know like what you're doing and how you're doing. And I feel like you, you've been killing it. Like you're podcasting. You. I don't have a podcast. YouTubing. I do have a YouTube, but I don't do anything with it. You're constantly hustling and thank you stuff. so much seriously well also i get a lot of advice from ali from be social yeah and then i also i mean like shani darden is also mm-hmm. like a fantastic like wealth of knowledge i can't even take it so you women in the field who have like kind of opened the doors for us like you know new entrepreneurs have i mean it's invaluable all of this stuff i would be still in the dark like in chino injecting and like you know well, out why in chino. do you think that um, I think that I've always had a bolder plan, but I just yeah. was never sure how to execute it. And being connected with women like you who have done the damn thing yeah. have really been able to help shape my entire career. And I don't even think you notice it because we're at lunch and I'm like, so Kel, how have you done this? And she'll say something completely nonchalant. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, what? I almost made that huge mistake in my career. I'm so glad I spoke to her before this. So stuff like that. Okay, so I want to ask you really quickly. <laughs> Tell us. Um, Kelly, at 10 years old, did you think that you were going to have the brow empire that you have now? Definitely not. Um, But I always loved beauty. So whether I was, I mean, you know, Halloween, any occasion where I could dress up in anything possible, my mom's heels, my mom's knee-high boots, dancing around with makeup, music. Actually, I I remember seeing (laughs) my first drag queen when I was probably around 10 at Neiman Marcus. And my mom, my mom, you know, I am very observant. And I was like, Mom, I think 
that's a boy. And I mean, I'm 41. This is a long time ago. 30 years ago. Yeah. You know, but um, I've just, I was always in her purse loving makeup, um, digging in it. She always kicked me out. And I think anytime anyone pushes me away, I go for it even more. Yeah. Um, but I definitely didn't think I'd be doing, well, I guess not owning a salon. That's for sure. But and it's hard it's a lot of work Mm -hmm. um i do love what i do and i love making people feel good and and making them feel pretty Mm -hmm. um but the business part of it can get intense for sure so i know that you started off with in a place in beverly hills and you mentored with someone how long do you think it took you to be considered an expert because you know how people will say I'm a brow expert and they just like graduated esthetician school like how long was it until you transitioned into expert status that's a hard question I don't don't know I mean I think even to this day I I question what I'm doing (laughs) and like is this good enough (laughs) seriously um, getting real with Kelly. You guys know this is gin and juice right now. <laughs> Just kidding. Wait, it's thinking. champagne. Yeah. So she's wearing a notorious B.I.G. I remember the so the person who trained me, his name was Damone Roberts. Um, and he used to ask me to do his eyebrows and I would be so freaked out by it because he was the best. Yeah. And and he was so good. And he'd say, Kelly, do my brows. And I would run. I'd either pretend I had to go to the bathroom or I was busy. I, I just can't made imagine myself you being busy. nervous like that. Oh my god, all the time. I was like freaked out by it, like so freaked out by it. And then at what point did you decide, okay, it's time to leave here and it's I'm going to do my own thing now? Well, I had a baby, so I went home on maternity leave, and um, from that point, like I always wanted to be in the beauty business, also because you have your own freedom Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so like we can make our own schedule not have to work a nine to five not be in an office like I would die Mm -hmm. doing something like that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's initially part of why I did it Um, and there were rules and you know I didn't really want to have rules yeah I was having a baby so I was the only person there that was having a kid no one had children and I just wanted my own freedom in my own space I stayed home for a year um, and I started all over a year later in Venice. So I went from Beverly Hills to Venice, mm-hmm. totally from scratch. Um, and it, it, that's the thing. Like I have friends now that I try to recruit even yeah. from back then, my friend Marissa, mm-hmm. um, who started at, at Demones with me and people are so scared to start over mm-hmm. and it's like, people are going to follow you. It doesn't matter where you go. It's not that far. Like, you know, I drove to yeah. you and Chino. Yeah. My clients come. Like I it could not believe it. What? So thankful that you came out to Chino one day because I was like, little old me. There's no, like dust amazing. out here. People are always going to go to their yeah. stylist, their doctor. This I is do one thing that, that I, I do teach in my master classes is that, you know, especially to women. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically everyone I teach is a woman, which mm-hmm. is I love. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, is that we can make our own schedule. And being a single mom, I can work two days a week, leave at 12, leave at three, do what I need to do. And I know it's scary. And a lot of women think they have to work so many hours or they have to work Saturdays. I worked Saturdays until my son was, I don't know, maybe eight or something. And then I was like, I can't work every Saturday and never be at home on the weekend. So you paid your dues. Oh, yeah. I mean, paid my dues. That's like. Even before him, and I would imagine that you were still working Saturdays. So it's like, what, a good 10 years of Saturdays? At least. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's the hard part of, like, business now is people don't realize, like, the hustle and what you have to put into it yeah. to be able to not be there that much. Right. Because I do have girls who want to apply and, like, work with us. Yeah. And they'll say, I can work, like, a Tuesday and maybe a Thursday, but no weekends. Yeah. And I'm like, I did every weekend yeah. for 10 years. Right. Yeah. And had two little kids waiting at home for me at the end of that. And it's an entire process. And you really do need to work up to that. Yeah. I think that's what's really hard. To, I mean, I know I keep saying really hard, but I, from being in the business and growing it and building it, mm-hmm. you and I, from scratch before there was social media, that's like the true nitty gritty get down to it, putting in the work. Now you can post pictures and say you're mm-hmm. an expert. Mm-hmm. and not have any kind of background which is great for people 
right? But it also takes away from the people who have like hustled. Okay, sure. So right. I have a question about your business growth. So you started your own business and then um, you started scaling. So then you employed other women to work with you and you trained them and that grew. Tell me about the struggles of scaling and growing your business. Tell me that part and then I'm going to ask you about what the payoff is afterwards. I mean, honestly, we grew because of Instagram. I think people, just like how I reached out to you, people would reach out to me and say, can I work here? Are you hiring? And it basically just became a cycle of people coming and wanting to be there. And no one came with a clientele. You know, we did um, last year, we have meetings all the time. My best friend works with me. And she actually does like the statistics and learns like how many people we do, which I would never do. Mm -hmm. um, but last, so last November, we had 500 new people in just november wow last year that's crazy yeah that's huge like so that is because of social media yeah us posting pictures and my girls reposting and them making videos like it's mm -hmm. so important to do all of those things so a lot of them have left and started their own thing and that obviously is tough as well because then i have to start over and building another person yeah so in the um, injector world also i would say it's the same thing a lot of um injectors are employed and yeah. I know that a lot of business owners are worried about you know I just give everything to this injector I take them under my wing and then I show them the ways and then how do I know that that person is going to stick around or not so you don't. We'll it doesn't matter there's no that you just don't honestly I'll drink to that yeah cheers so then what's the I mean what's your secret sauce to it obviously you've kind of figured out I don't have a secret sauce tell, tell I'm me on a whole this. new round of new girls we're all just figuring this out yes every day I mean it's funny because people always say don't work with your family or friends and the two people that I can trust the most are my best friend Natalie and my cousin Jason and my cousin is my CEO they're so lovely and Natalie runs my business like the two of them yeah and those are the two people that I know have my back yes you know my it's, it's been a hard cousin is me. my show producer yeah you have your family here too so yeah and my husband's our CFO exactly he filmed our last video yeah I think that for the most part it's really difficult to work with family and friends because if there's conflict then yeah. you're worried about preserving that relationship afterwards I mean, being I think Filipino it has to be American, someone that like you're really, really close to, though. Yes. And also we not just like, like a friend. We will yell at each other. Right. We will. And then in, in two minutes, it's fine because yeah. that's just the way we talk to each other. And we know each other yeah. well enough that it doesn't get in the way. But I can see how if you're like acquaintances, yeah, if work. you speak incorrectly to someone or like overstep or say something that you think is normal, but it rubs them the wrong way, then there goes that relationship and the kids don't play anymore and then you're fucked. <laughs> so, well, that's what sucks, too for and I know you're super friendly like I am I become friends with these people yeah and then but you're also the boss so you have to put rules in place but then hang out with them and then they text you things that they shouldn't be texting you and you say wait leave me out of this talk to someone else and it just sucks yeah I hear it that it super sucks I'm like I, I, you have to take yourself out of it but yeah. your feeling my feelings are still attached to all of it so it's been really like a learning experience to like detach my heart yeah <laughs> which is not easy yeah it's not easy when you wear your heart on your sleeve and you yeah. are a natural people person I, for sure 100 percent natural people person and i love to help people yeah so growing my girls is fun for me i enjoy doing it mm -hmm. so when if it goes like obviously if someone leaves on good terms great amazing i hope you guys kill it mm -hmm. but when someone does it shady or you know just rude it's just it's just it's just it stings yeah, yeah, I totally hear you. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions about growth in the product line. Okay. So you started off with a brow, with a, one brow product, correct? And then now you have how many SKUs? I'm so bad at this. Um, like over a dozen? I would say maybe 14, yeah. probably more, but I don't know. And all surrounding brows, and they're yes. all doing very, very well. Yeah. So walk me through the process of how you chose specific colors, how you chose, like how did you decide on certain things in growing your line? Because I've I know you're a perfectionist when yeah. it comes to quality. 100%. Uh, perfectionist is my middle name for sure. I'm a Virgo freak. That's why brows. I love Virgos. Oh my God. Virgos. Beyonce is a Virgo. Virgos yes, are the hardest is. working people ever. Natalie's a Virgo too. Only hiring Just Virgos that. from now on. <laughs> um, 
but I am a total perfectionist. So anything that I touch or see or am going to attempt to sell to someone mm -hmm. has to be perfect. If it's flawed, mm -hmm. I'm not going to put that out there. I recently went to a show. I'm going to jump forward a little bit. Um, where I had brushes of mine that I had pulled out of a package and went to use on someone to to um, display, like okay. to show how to how to fill in their brows, okay. and it was really really fat, and I about died. I was like, what what is this? Where did this come from? And someone was trying to save money and order brushes without m getting the okay from me <gasps> somewhere else. No, and I was like, how many of these are there out there in the world? Oh, like no. trash them all. I'm gonna die. Um, it, I'm gonna die. <laughs> like this shit sucks. It needs to go in the trash. I don't give a shit how oh many there God. are. Like it's no. Um, because what happened to that person? Did you find out who it was? And then you they were don't like, work there anymore. But not because of that. I mean, I mean that's obviously one reason. Yeah, but that's lesson not like, learned. Hey, you're fired. Um, but that's also part of what is hard too about growing your business and having people involved in what you do. Yeah, I care about the quality of the services that people get and the products that they get so my line is super small there's not a lot of SKUs. there's mm -hmm. not a lot of products because i don't feel you need tons of things mm -hmm. for your brows mm -hmm. obviously you know a lot of lines are constantly coming out with a new color a new shade a new style a wax a pomade of this or that it's like it's just too much it's right. an eyebrow right you know and even when people are like oh my god you do brows i'm like it's just it, it yeah i do but it's brows like it's yeah. not fucking yeah rocket science yeah you know <laughs> i love that i'm serious okay so a lot of people you sell everything on your own and on your website and i know that a lot of people who have specific products are trying to get into the big box stores like sephora and ulta tell me why you have decided to keep private about that and not go into a big box store because you i know that you have had many opportunities to well obviously being in sephora or ulta or you know Nordstrom's or anything would be very cool, right? I mean, it's the cool factor. It's the I'm fucking cool, which I would like to be fucking cool. I want to um, be cool too. But you don't make money. So when you go into Sephora or Ulta, you have to sell it to them for like 60% off what you would sell. And then you have to be able to restock those items when they're out. I That's so important for you guys to listen to. It I know is, it's yeah. the goal to like... Yeah have your brand associated with one of these one of these stores but think about your numbers and the money you're taking home also and and what your end game with the product is yeah okay go on with that so i sell it by myself and we sell it online and and you guys do so well yeah we do we do really good we're in um f over 400 salons right now with wow. no marketing at all um like no like other than me saying on instagram do you want to sell kbb which i don't even do um we're in 400 salons the last time i checked do you work with a pr company no it's all posting it that and is amazing it's also we are in because the future it's good work it's it is. quality products yeah so people aren't returning things and they're using it and they believe in it and then they want it and mm -hmm. i teach you guys how to sell it how to do it it's just it, if you sell someone something good, they will trust you forever. Mm -hmm. My clients ask me where to get married. Like literally I had a client who I love and she was like, should I get married in Catalina or Palm Springs? I'm like, absolutely Palm Springs. I was going to say the same thing. I'm like, first of all, you are not Catalina. That's uh -huh. not your vibe. Mm -hmm. But they trust your opinion because they know you're not bullshitting them. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. don't sell me shit. Sell yeah. me something that works. If you like, my clients buy stuff all the time. Yeah, I mean, they go to my hair person. They go to you. They mm -hmm. all want to see Vanessa. Kelly I always has say I'll text me Vanessa. An endless amount of referrals. Not I that have you to have say any this. Room for any of them. Well, now I don't because you started off referring to me like four years ago <laughs> or something like that. It's been <laughs> She's amazing. So amazing. I think that that's really important to bring up for injectors out there who are trying to figure out how do I grow my business, how do I gain more patience. You guys have to really check out in your community who are the statement makers, who are the you know area. People in your area who are like the known stylists or known known brow gurus, um, all of the artists in your area that you can collab with, that you feel like you align yourself with, it 
there's so much to it when I mean Kelly has the biggest mouth possible and the best biggest. possible weight like she yes. will tell I mean she meets 500 new women a month she'll tell all of them about you that's I mean it's so valuable yeah and then I just make sure my Kel is taken care of exactly. you know what I mean Thanks. so okay. so that's also something I teach too one network 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 Every single person that walks in front of you is a possible client. Even like, so I do brows, right? We have, what's your name? Mark. We have Mark here. We have Mark here. Cameraman. He probably is not coming in for his brows, but I bet he has a sister or a mom or a girlfriend or someone who wants to come in. So there we go. We have a client. We have two women. We have uh, Byron. Byron. Byron's second shout out of the day. Yeah. So anyways, the point is that everyone is a possible client. Be nice to everyone. You never know what anyone does. Oh, yeah. Or who they are. Yes. Not that that even matters, but you should still be nice to everyone. Um, and everyone can come get something done. Yeah. You know, especially. And, and that's the thing, too. With I always say, like, there's no competition because every single person in the world has a face, has brows. Mm -hmm. They can go anywhere for Botox. They can mm -hmm. go anywhere for brows. Like, it, it, it's all about you and your relationship with people. Absolutely. To get them to come back. Yeah. Right? And if you're a stylist and you're starting your own business and you're trying to grow, invite hair people in, invite makeup artists in, invite my gynecologist comes in. Uh, yeah. So perfect. Actually, I don't even call her my gyno. She's really my OB. She delivered my child. Oh my, my gosh. My son's almost 14. She could be both. And she comes in and we, we trade services. <laughs> Yeah, I love it's it. the best thing ever. My, my girlfriend, it. Patty, who owns um, Barton Prayer, which is a fabulous, expensive glasses. Yes. I get fancy glasses and she gets free brows. So wonderful. So I'll do her brows as much as it takes to get like $400 glasses. So you're so amazing. Fun, you know, leverage your skill. Yeah, for sure. OK, pimp I pimp yourself question. out. Pimp yourself people. out to a certain degree. I don't want to see you on Holt Boulevard. Okay, yeah. so tell me about being a working mom, being an entrepreneur that's killing it, is employing a lot of her family. A lot of people lean on you. Your employees lean on you. And you also have a super handsome, wonderful son who I absolutely love. Tell me how you balance that. Because I know even when we spoke together at the Be Social series, yeah. that day you almost didn't come because you were like, I need to put family first. Something's going on. Yeah. How do you, where do you draw the line and how do you balance all of that? Well, you know, at the end of the day, my son is always going to come first. My family is always going to come first. Um, but we also do have work and we have to be responsible and we have to, you know, do the things that we need to do to provide for our children and our families. So it really just depends on the situation. Um, one ex example is Cardi B. I had gotten asked to do her. I'd never done her before. And it was my son's sports awards. And his dad was not around to go to the event. And um, I wasn't going to let my son be given an award in front of everybody with no family there. Yeah. So I said no. And, Oof. you know, it is what it is. That's a and tough one. Yeah. It, I mean, it's Cardi B, but I mean, it's my tough, kids, but it's not I don't tough. care who yeah. you are. Like, my kid's always going to be the most important. Yes. Yes, I want to do Cardi, but Cardi's yes. going to have to wait. And even with the Kardashians, sometimes I'm like, listen, I can't do it today. Yeah. And you have to, like, sometimes I do have to do it. I got asked to go on Halloween for a client, and I was like, I got to go. Yeah. But at, but if I can, I'm always going to try my best to, to to have my family as the priority. Right. You know, it, it, it it's just, it's balance, and every day is different. Yeah. Every day, every single day yes. is a juggling act. So even yeah. today, I was like, we got to do this early because I got to go. We're downtown and I have to go to Santa Monica to pick up my son from school <laughs> so that he can go out with his friends after. Yeah. And I'm also a fun mom, too. Like, you know, you are really fun. I try to be. I remember on Halloween, he was like, Mom, I'm going to go through your stuff because I need a costume. And you were <sighs> like, well, you have this choice and this choice. <laughs> no, he asked me at 10 o'clock the night before. Yeah. Um, Do you have red sweats or a white beanie? I'm like, no, I don't <laughs> like like what are you trying to be he's like papa smurf i'm like yeah that's not happening <laughs> so i gave him a blue snoop dog shirt and that was his blue smurf shirt oh my god it's perfect yeah whatever okay so I'm how trying. do you find time okay you're a mom now we've covered you're an ent successful entrepreneur you're a mom do you have a social life i do have a social life tell me how you have room for a social life at this point i mean I just, I mean, I, I work a lot. We do travel a lot. I have a lot of things scheduled like you. Um, 
but just because I love you, I'm here. Um, but I <laughs> did. Thank you. Y- yeah. To- I, y- this is my first podcast, by the way. I'm so excited. Just you saying. popped your podcast cherry, you, baby. Yes, you did. Um, but I, you have to have some something going on for yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. Otherwise, you just, I mean, it's just too hard. Um, and it is hard. I, you know, people ask me out. And sometimes the schedule just doesn't work. So well, I think you're such is. a people person also that maybe some personalities don't need too much of that. But I feel like someone like you and I, we need to, yeah, you know, just relax, release, let go, have a good night with I the girls. Love, I love being Girl with my night. girlfriends. I really just enjoy my friends. Me too. My girlfriends. Yeah. Like we could do, we could sit in my bed. Like yes. I have a handful of friends that will come over just to hang out in my bed. Yeah. Like not kidding. Yeah. They call Your bed the is notorious. It is notorious. It's it is a cloud. Sad. I've been in that bed multiple <laughs> my times. My friend from New York was like, hey, I'm in town. Can we just hang out in your bed? And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than girl time. I, I was yeah. talking to someone yesterday. We were getting ready to go somewhere. I think it was the training. And I was like, There's nothing better than getting ready with your girls or just sitting around with your girls and even just driving with girls, I feel like is so fun. The actual event usually doesn't seem to play out as fun as you always think it's going to be it's yeah. like the being with your girls I'm always part. like let's do this let's hike let's brunch let's go here <laughs> even on my birthday when we went to Mexico we had all yeah. these things planned we did nothing but hang out we by the lounged pool around the whole time and drank which was I'm totally so okay much with. fun it was so much it fun. was fun okay so what's in the future for your company what can we expect in 2020 the Justin Timberlake experience wow so like I just got a note to sit up straight because we're on video. We're on YouTube now, like my aunties would say. We're on YouTube. Okay, tell me. That's funny. <laughs> um, well, we are about to meet with a company who is a chain store um, that is a waxing business that Ooh. might carry our line. I think there's 150 stores. Wow. So that would be really cool. Um, we are doing just a lot of shows like, yeah, you know, I, I'm really big in like manifesting and putting out there what I want to do. How do you work on manifestation? I just talk about it. Like I just to myself. Right. So like, do you talk like, about it with other people or is it just um, to yourself? It's it both. It's both. So for travel, I always tell my best friend, Natalie. Yeah. I'm like, I want to, I just want to go anywhere. What if like, I want to go to Australia. We just went to Australia. Yeah. I, 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 my goal was to be flown somewhere to do brows. And the first time was the middle effing East, like the middle East. Like we got flown to the middle fucking East. That's okay. amazing. Yes. It was the craziest, coolest experience. So you say ever. it out loud and you say, I want this to happen. Yeah, and it's been happening. So we got flown to the Middle East. We got flown to Australia. We've gone to Canada. Um, we we were about to go to Ireland. We just had a phone call Ooh, with people in Ireland. Nice. Yeah, it's really effing cool. That's fantastic. For eyebrows. I mean, brows are. Tell me how oh, you explain. I brows have to, to really people. quickly though fast forward to Cardi B because I did end up doing her, and my coolest Cardi B experience. Well, one, I took you with me one time. I was there with Cardi B. I wasn't gonna say anything until she just said it, saying. but I'm just saying. I was like, um, Vanessa, Shh. get your shit together. We're going to Cardi B. <laughs> what time did you call me? I don't know, but you don't always answer your phone. It's, ever. I'm the worst. She never with, answers. Well, it's because I'm putting my family messages. first at home. No, no. You need to be able to at least look at it. it be emergency. <sighs> I know. You're right. So she. I think Kelly calls me sometime in the evening. It's all. It's like early evening. And she goes, answer your so phone, cool. bitch. She texts me first. Answer your phone, bitch. And I, <laughs> and I call her and I'm like, hey. And she was like, get your shit packed. We're going to Cardi B. And I was like. I was like, what? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, babe, I'm going to have to go. And he was like, no, you're staying here. You just got here. And I was like, Kelly called me. It's Cardi B. And he's like, bye. And yeah. like right away, like I left to go get everything. And then, I mean, you take over from here. Well, it was, I mean, it's, that's the thing. Like if I'm going to be able to do someone cool and I have a cool friend that can do cool things too, I'm taking my cool friend also. Just want to be cool. Yeah, well, but it is, it is, but also too, you're amazing at what you do. So I'm not going to refer people who aren't great. And if I'm referring someone great like you, then they trust me more because I've referred my fabulous friend, Vanessa. Yes, thank right? you. So. I had such a good time with you that night. And she looked amazing. She's sweet. But my cool experience was getting flown to the Met Gala. Oh. To do her, I mean, that was the fucking, like, 
So, so that was the first time that I actually got flown somewhere specifically just for bra. No, that's not true. Same people, the Middle East people. But anyways, a celebrity flew me. They flew me to New York to do her brows for, for the, the Met. For I remember the Met. seeing the behind the scenes with you in it. In the the Met is fucking huge. Yeah. So that was that was a goal. I people, too would like. I'm going to manifest this. I want to be flown out for the Met. I just put it out for there a, for yeah for, for some glowing red carpet facial. facial. Mm-hmm. There we're you go. We're going together. That was amazing. Ching, ching. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some beauty secrets and tips now. Oh, no. what, okay, so before I get to that, tell me what you feel like is the worst trend right now with brows. What are you like? I, people stop I doing you this. Say just bra uh, faces. I was going to say all kinds of things. We can get to that too. But I, brows I, I don't want first. To. Um, <sighs> I guess microblading. Tell me about microblading. What do people need to understand about microblading that they need to hear from a brow guru? That it does not go away. It is a tattoo on your face. If you have a tattoo, I have a tattoo on my finger. This is never going away. They say it fades over time and you retouch it. To all the people that have tattoos, do you go over a tattoo? No. The answer is no. So you're not going to go over two or three times because they tell you to do touch-ups three times on your face they spread see my brow my o is fat it (laughs) used to be skinny it spread do you want that Mm. on your face no anyone in this room can do microblading you don't have to have a license you don't have to have anything isn't that so crazy there's like very little regulation with who can actually do that zero and it's a permanent treatment on your face so i had this one client who had had the most beautiful brows and she came in after getting microblading and i was like you just fucked your face man like she's like what do i do i'm like honestly there's nothing you can do so what do you say to someone who's like no it depends on who does it show me their part (laughs) ask for photos okay so my other best friend jenny she has thin brows she's had her brows microbladed hers look good for her so it is for the person who has thin over tweezed brows Mm -hmm. if they have alopecia Mm -hmm. if they have a scar if they have just no hair Mm -hmm. if they are a cancer patient Mm -hmm. it is a good thing for people who need it it is not for everybody it is not for people like anyone in the room here like we all if you have eyebrows you don't need microblading okay that's great i think people need to know that for sure for sure for microblading but they have like full bushy brows already and i'm like what in the world would you ever need that for well they're like well i just don't want to fill in my brows i'm like well you have to brush your teeth every day just fill in your brows (laughs) don't fuck your face same well also i think what's really important is that i've had patients come in who about 10 years ago have had lipstick tattoo or lip shading and your lips change over time the shape changes the elasticity and the tissue changes the collagen changes and so what happened was styles change change. no one uses that red so what happened was she had like a double set of lips and this woman was in her 50s she had it done in her late 30s or early 40s and it just looked ridiculous and there was no way for her to really try to remove it she tried doing tattoo removal it doesn't always work out and and it it was a nightmare crazy painful yeah i had a client who had my who had microblading and then started tattooing over it with white no this is ridiculous to try to cover the tattoo yeah these days people are also doing like tattooing into the skin in dark circles oh, of like skin like that. flesh colored and yeah. it always looks like tattoo it does not look like your skin all of a sudden is brighter it's really strange no just go see vanessa she'll fix it for just you just go see both of us exactly. okay um what is the weirdest beauty secret you've ever tried out shaving my face Oh, yes. Tell me about this because you do it regularly. I do. So you're ahead of the game. And I tell my clients too. No, no. Uh, Dermaplaning. 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 So which is even totally weirder too. So I don't even think you're allowed to technically dermaplane in a spa. Right. Which is so silly. It's shaving. It's shaving. It's literally shaving. So think about it, people. If you're getting dermaplaned, it is a little razor on a little stick that they go like this and it shaves the hair off your face, the peach fuzz. So you can take your razor at home and do the same thing. (laughs) I do it to my face all the time. Do I have a beard? No. I'm just taking the fuzz off and then my face looks glowy and I get compliment. I do get complimented a lot. You you mean your skin's amazing. I am 41 and I do tell people I have no no shame that Vanessa fixes my face. I don't fix you. You do stuff. I help. And they say, what do you do? I said, I don't know. I just let her do it. 
I just boop, 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 sprinkle yeah, a little like, fairy like, what dust. What are we doing today? I'm like, whatever you think. <laughs> what should we do today? Obviously, all parts of our faces are, it's not symmetrical. Right. Right. So I had one client whose brow is higher than the other. Mm-hmm. And I said to her, I said, you should probably maybe, and I know her. I'm not just saying it to a random person. Maybe go get some Botox on one of the sides mm-hmm. to either lift the other one or lower mm-hmm. one. And I felt comfortable saying that because I know her as my friend, mm-hmm. but I know that actually helps, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Gosh, we can it. definitely, you know, raise or lift uneven brows. And I always talk about how we can work towards symmetry, but it's like nearly impossible to gain yeah. complete symmetry for sure. But I totally, I totally get it. Insane. I do that all the time. I'm so glad we have this recorded Darn that it. you do it because now I feel good about myself. We're normal. <laughs> Shit, man. But I had a good point. Okay, so we were talking about how you can refer your your good friends no that's not it okay whatever. something with eyebrows we'll wipe it out and oh oh i know i know i know i know Cut so two. telling people about botox so a lot of people are like no i'll just get it when i'm older no people the whole point of it is to get it now so you don't have wrinkles when you're older it's preventative it is very preventative right? now i know people who have and I don't do gotten facelifts do in their like late 20s early 30s Ugh. And the, and the surgeon has convinced them to do it because they said it was preventative. A facelift is not preventative. No. Botox can be preventative. Microneedling can be. Just good skincare routines can be preventative. But definitely, but like Botox is preventative. No, 100%, like I don't want to I mean, be telling I've been doing people it since I was twenty three. Right, that's what yeah. I'm saying. And your face is perfect. Yeah. Uh, thank you that's so nice no I mean, it is it's so pretty but also i don't i mean i'm 33 now and it's like really telling you you're so lines. pretty oh my god you're so pretty oh my god you're so good at what you do you're so pretty though <laughs> you're so pretty i'm actually okay, so sweating and i'm hot right now i'm sweating and i'm keeping my arms so close to me because i don't want you to smell my bo right now okay so can you tell me what your favorite beauty trick is for someone when they're working on their own brows at home i know that you've explained this a million times but Thank if they're nothing. doing it at home Say they, they purchase KBB. Like to, to, to fill in? Yes. Um, I would say the highlighter. The highlighter is my favorite. I love the highlighter. When I started using the highlighter, I feel like it changed how I did my brows because I could clean up so nicely yeah. and it just made the color in my brow pop. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? Yeah. The one you, you gave me. So there's two tones. There's like a lighter one that didn't work out for me and then oh, there's the darker the one. Yeah. The tan. Okay, so we have light and tan. <laughs> She's the like, I don't know what the you fuck put. you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to think about the steps that she's saying. Underneath. So, uh, so, but the cool thing about the highlighter is that it, it, one, it, the whole point of it is to make your eyebrows pop, right? Mm-hmm. And your eyes stand out. But if you have holes in your brows, it's going to conceal and camouflage. What do you mean areas. holes in your brows? Like, so I have over tweezed brows. Right? Oh, okay. So they used to be really far apart. I have holes all in here, um, but I fill it in with makeup. But with the highlighter... It's soft and creamy and it goes over like so I have times of new hair growth that have come in because I've been yeah. using my new brow, brow growth. Well, oh, my Jesus, I can't even say it. My new brow growth, growth, my new brow serum, new brow serum that makes your brows grow. Yes, exactly. What's the active ingredient in it? How does it make you the hair grow? Me these things. How did so you just used it and you were like, this is working. Yes. Amazing. Fail. Big fat fail. <laughs> no, because I, so, so that kind of stuff when it comes to science or math, I just, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like it doesn't work for my brain, but it, I do test everything. Like and you know million, what works. I've been testing brow serums for like five years. It's Your really serums, everything long. you have though is cruelty free. Correct. Yes, 100%. Yeah. That I know. Yeah, okay, I don't can you know explain mixed company really mixed quickly? Company. You say things fr- in front of certain people, but you I don't say things. I say things in front of you. I don't want to talk about your things. They're Kelly's your things. mom is so proper, yes. and sometimes I when the girls get around well. her, her face is mortified. mortified. And I'm like, this is just combo. My mom We're calls just it being mixed open. company. You don't watch a movie that has sex scenes in it with your parents. It's well, Weird. I didn't choose that, but my mom took me to go see Soul Food when I was 12, and that was awkward as fuck, but I sat through it. I get it from her. Get it from Betty Brown. She's just hella inappropriate. That's her name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds inappropriate. <laughs> but no, okay. like it's mixed company. Okay? Let's take the you best don't. turn possible. I, I but on the mixed company thing, I will say one uh, one really really funny thing. I said to my son, "Who's your favorite?" 
and I said it better be me and I, and he said why and I said because you came out of my vagina that's why hey and he about died he oh thought it was God. the funniest he's thing so cute. which was funny I mean I, I don't know where Wait, it came can from you tell them how old it. your son is so they don't think he's four <laughs> that would be <laughs> okay too though <laughs> he's almost 14 he's 14 he's, he's full-on like teenager tall He's the cutest. He's so handsome. He is. Okay, so let's wrap up. We always talk about a segment called Self Care Club. Self Care Club. Self Care Club. And we go over <laughs> Kelly's face right now. We go over one you know thing what she we've been doing. <laughs> well, obviously that's a must. What do you What do you do to take care of yourself? What have you been doing in this past week to make sure that you've been taking care of yourself? Um, well, I went on two hikes. Yay me. Where at? One was in Valencia, and it was three hours long. Why so long? Because Celine, who oh, my course. our friend, of course, is the hiker, and she took me, and and she said her it, body's insane. Yeah, her body's great. Um, I actually survived. I mean, obviously, I'm here, but uh, it wasn't really that bad. But my hip bones, my hip, my joints killed after. Oh my gosh. Um, but I feel good like being in nature. I yeah, like. Me too. I just like just the wind and like the ocean to be honest like it just makes me feel calm do you like going fishing um the only place i've gone fishing is troutdale what <laughs> it's a man a it's a fake it's a fake lake where they put trout in it and you pay them to catch trout it's okay. like you take kids that's ridiculous okay what about um camping do you camp no i'll glamp oh i'll glamp i'll glamp, glamp. i'm gonna go to um i, I want to go to palm springs next week to glamp well yeah Just no to you're gonna away. be at the parker no, <laughs> and she's I like don't. i'm glamping Listen, <laughs> i don't want to go out and drink and I, i've done all of that i've done the drinking the dancing the I, I i'm over the hangovers like i'll drink and have a cocktail and you know have fun and be buzzed with my friends but i don't want to feel like shit the next day yeah, i want to yeah I which just, is why I, I just smoke weed instead <sighs> okay so I can't do that either so my it's mom terrible. gave me CBD like your mom gave you <sighs> CBD. It was the worst. I got totally high. Mixed company. This is the best. Yeah, No, because um, why for sleep? I think because I don't sleep well. Yeah. And it does like help drops, me sleep. Right. So tincture. she was like, this one doesn't. Yeah. Tincture. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Tinc tincture. You tinked it. So I so she's like, take one aspirin. I'm like, one aspirin is not going to do anything for me. Take three. Yeah. So the tincture of you're supposed to do like one little drop i did mm -hmm. like two big ones mm -hmm. and i was watching this movie and i was like i think i'm high i'm like oh my god i'm so stoned right now i'm like dude my mom just got me high and i told her she's like it was only it's not supposed to make you high i'm like listen lady i'm telling you i was just <laughs> tripping on a movie like it got me high what how did you how did you feel i didn't like it I don't what like was the it. feeling? Like, try to describe it. I'm like it. paranoid. I overthink shit. I'm like overanalyzing 16 oh and pregnant. God. The TV show 16 shrooms. and pregnant. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. I never tried shrooms. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You know I adore you so much and I love you. I adore you more. Do you have any other bits that you want the world to know? I think we covered it. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. CBD, vibrators, brows. We got it all. Ew, no, no. And Perfect. Brows, yes. I love it. Love you. Thank bye. you. Love you. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure that you guys check out our previous episodes and tune in for future content because we got some really cool stuff coming up for you.